Good morning, friends, and welcome to my channel. I am Crystal, and this is Homemaking on the Homestead. And it's Friday. Yay! My, uh, I can't say it's my favorite day now that my husband's retired. They're uh, pretty much all very similar, right? But uh, Friday is Coffee with Crystal here on my channel. And that is my little chatty time for you guys to grab your cup of coffee. Come on over and visit with me. I am going to be talking about today the word housewife and all kinds of different things related to that word. Uh, and I have a cookbook review and more little topics to chit chat with about with you about. So grab your cup of coffee and let's chat. Okay, ladies, what kind of good things have you got going in your kitchen uh, today or have had going on in your kitchen? And of course, what are you having for dinner? I uh, attempted to make some cinnamon rolls. Now I've made lots of cinnamon rolls. I've been a bread baker for years. And I should have realized that, you know, my yeast just wasn't as foamy as I thought it should be. And I was just like, oh, it'll probably be okay. It ended up that the cinnamon rolls were kind of flat and, well, not flat, but they didn't rise like they usually do. And they didn't do what they were usually supposed to do. It was also a, an apple recipe I was doing for apple cider cinnamon rolls. And I thought, oh, that sounds so good. Um, you know, in the end, I couldn't even taste apple cider, and um, I put some apples in as I rolled them up, little chopped up, diced up apples. Didn't really taste those too much. They were overly sweet, and um, I, yeah, so part of it was me, part of it was the recipe. I may try them again here soon. Um, my husband had no problem eating two of them. I did enjoy yesterday, you know, having a cup of tea and one of my cinnamon rolls when I broke my fast. And I, you know, so I was okay. Uh, they're not, they aren't bad, but um, I wouldn't make them again. And I certainly need to do a check on my package of yeast. Uh, the last time I used that yeast, everything was fine. So that's why, which wasn't that long ago. So that's kind of why it has me confused a bit. Was it me or was it the recipe or was it the yeast? I don't know. Anyway, that's one thing I've had baking. Um, tonight for dinner, I pulled out my crock pot. I grabbed one of my crock pot chicken meals, my honey Dijon chicken. It's the last one of those that I have. Um, I did a, a video uh, a while back on some dump and go crock pot type meals. I'm almost out of all of those and I have just loved them. I had one video on chicken and the other video was on beef meals. And I think it's time for me to do another round of some dump and go recipes because they have been so great to have on hand. But anyway, so I'm going to have that. I also have about six cups of chicken broth that I want to use up. And some of it is going to be used to cook it as the liquid to cook rice tonight to go with my chicken. And the rest of it, I'm going to make a very small pot of vegetable chicken soup. I had enough little bits and pieces of chicken to pull off the bones after I'd made the broth that I'm just going to throw that in there with lots of veggies. We're either going to eat it like that or, you know, tomorrow or the next day, whatever. I could thicken it all up into, as to gravy and have that over biscuits or cornbread or something like that. So that's what I've got going on in my kitchen today. The weather here has been like very cool fall mornings, you know put on the layers by midday you're taking off the sweaters and second layered shirts and stuff like that and I'm really loving it um, I'm seeing that it's coming to an end though we're going I mean like uh, kind of overnight I'm looking ahead at the weather forecast and we're going to be going from days that have been in the mid 70s just uh, actually no they've been in the upper 60s so low 70s just perfect weather <laughs> sunny to rain and clouds and and highs you know mid 50s so we're doing a definite change of season it looks like very quickly and the rainy season which you know rainy season here in the pacific northwest lasts uh, from about now to about uh, June. <laughs> so, uh, so the rainy season looks like it's going to be underway here soon, but that's okay. I'm, uh, I'm excited to, just for the change of seasons this year. So what is the weather looking like at your place? Are you feeling those fall vibes? Are you uh, enjoying your fall days? Let me know in the comments. I was thinking of the term housewife. Uh, I had come across somebody's article about um, 
the fact that they didn't like to be called the housewife. And I thought, you know, it's a, it's a, um, it's probably um, considered today like to be an outdated term or something like that. I, I actually like the term. <laughs> I actually don't have a problem with being called housewife. Um, I, I think, um, you know, it's just ends up being society's opinion. So I, I decided to just kind of do my own word search on the word housewife and, and just see what kind of things came up. Um, it's considered, uh, you know, a, an outdated term, that is for sure. Uh, it, is, it is something that uh, people uh, on one side of the fence can find offensive because it uh, suggests that maybe they don't have an education, they didn't have uh, any other options. Um, it's something that maybe your, you know, your mothers, grandmothers, great-grandmothers did because, you know, that was what, how society did it. And there weren't a lot of options for women other than to be a housewife. I also saw women saying that it was something only women with rich husbands can do. And so I found, I found that all uh, very, you know, very interesting. About, oh gosh, now it's been probably eight or nine years ago, one of my daughters um, went to Denmark uh, to be an au pair. So she was there almost a year and worked for a very nice family and took care of their children, did miscellaneous household uh, duties and things. And uh, what she found the most interesting is that uh, as she met other au pairs, of course, and then other people in the process of, you know, taking her, uh, the kids to school and doing her job, what she found is that there were virtually no homemakers. There was no housewives. Nobody stayed home and took care of the children. Au pairs are very common in Europe. It is something that many people do. Um, it, it's not so common here in the United States, although people can do it. Um, it's just, I think it's more economically feasible for people living in Europe because of the laws surrounding hire, the hiring of au pairs. Um, but yeah, so you know, is is the housewife uh, becoming as something that no longer exists? So maybe the term, it, you know, is getting changed and turned or, and, and moved around to not just be housewife, but, you know, homemaker and things like that. I find that those views are, are quite um, obviously on the negative side of it. But I also find in our culture today that... Um, our society is doing everything they possibly can to go against what God has put into place. And I'm seeing this, you know, more and more and more. Um, and I think that uh, being just that gentle, quiet voice defending, you know, the term housewife, defending the position housewife, I think is really important today. Uh, that we don't lose that, and that, and that it can be turned around to be something that is is okay, and something that is, um, uh, you know, an honor to be. Uh, being a homemaker is a huge job. Uh, you know, there is so much more uh, to it than people want to give it credit for. People uh, in the culture today don't want to give credit to the home having any sort of. Flying here, I need to get the home having any sort of value anymore. So, uh, therefore, why do you need somebody to take care of something that intrinsically doesn't have the value uh, in their eyes, at least? Again, this is tearing away at the fabric of what God has created. I even saw a woman that um, was defending the use of the word housewife, and but yet then went on to justify ways that you know you can uh, have value if you stay at home. And I'm like, you know, what, what, all, what are all the life choices out there that one needs to defend? You know, that you, that it's okay if I do this. You know, here's the, and here are all the reasons why. And then the question, you know, came to my mind. So, is there a difference between housewife and homemaker? You know, I think um, housewife is generally referred to a woman that stays home all the time. Uh, a homemaker is, um, you know, all women that have a home. However, I think that, you know, I, I, to me, it doesn't really matter which word is used. I think that um, 
any woman who has a home and is a wife would therefore be a housewife. Any woman that has a home is therefore a homemaker. I think a lot of it has to do with the value that we put on our home and the role that we have in, uh, in our home. So being a housewife slash homemaker applies to women, whether they work outside the home, uh, have a job, responsibilities outside the home, you know, where's their heart at? Is their heart at their home for making their home, uh, you know, to be a, a lover of the home? Um, Titus 2.5 says that older women are to encourage women to be busy at home, to be workers at home, keepers of the home, you know, it all depends on the translation that you look at. And I think that it is a God-given role for us. We see Proverbs 31 and the 31 woman, and she has a lot under her a sphere that she's responsible for. Uh, all of these things uh, were under a woman's um, view, purview, uh, responsibility. They were hers to take care of. Um, it, the husband had his role and the things that he was supposed to do and she was the one that needed to make sure that the home functioned every day, that there was food to eat, that there were clothes to wear, uh, you know, no matter what the weather was. All of those things were her job and, and they still are our job today. So then, of course, I had to go to the dictionary to find out what the dictionary version of it, and there's several dictionaries and different ones, but the, uh, but the Cambridge Dictionary definition was a woman whose work is inside the home, doing the cleaning, cooking, etc., and who usually does not have any other job. The Webster Dictionary definition was a married woman in charge of a household. I think it goes back to that societal view as something to be ashamed of to be a housewife. Uh, in our day and age and in this culture, and I totally disagree with that. I like Tasha Tudor's, Tudor's quote, uh, I enjoy doing housework, ironing, washing, cooking, dishwashing. Whenever I get one of those questionnaires and they ask, what is your profession? I always put down housewife. It is an admirable profession. Why apologize for it? You aren't stupid because you're a housewife. When you're stirring the jam, you can read Shakespeare. I thought that was really cute, <laughs> you know, and I think that it, it is it is okay, in my opinion, to uh, for me to call myself a housewife. I um, I am carrying on, I am carrying on a legacy and a tradition of many generations. Uh, my mother uh, stayed at home most of the time. Uh, when I got older uh, as a teenager and left home, then she uh, had, did go to work. Uh, my grandmother was at home full time. My great grandmother, you know, you go back in history and that was how women live. And it is carrying on that legacy in a very difficult culture today that doesn't always approve, you know. Uh, and it, it, but it doesn't matter. I think as, um, as a Christian woman myself, my number one priority is to uh, serve the Lord, to follow His ways, to follow the Word of God, and to take joy in that and to know that uh, I, am, I am working and moving in the right direction. I am in doing exactly what God has called me to do, and so the term doesn't really matter to me. You know, you can call me a housewife, call me a homemaker. I like them both. Uh, do you have any thoughts on this topic? Because I would love to hear that. I would love to know what you think. Housewife, homemaker, um, where do you stand on the whole thing? Okay, let's move on now. Okay, the last thing I want to do is a book review on a cookbook. This one was given to me by somebody and it is called the Everything Quick Meals Cookbook. It has 300 fast and easy recipes. I don't know if you've ever seen, uh, I'm sure you have, the Everything books. So, you know, I, I always am like, okay, we'll see. When anybody, when any book uh, says fast and easy, it usually means that there are a lot of prepackaged foods that are used in the recipes because you want something quick. What I was pleasantly surprised as I went through this book is that there are a lot of recipes that just use basic things, basic staples, pantry staples. Uh, there are a few canned soups and Oh, you know, package of stuffing or, a, um, you know, something like that. Be a, bully, a can of uh, chicken bouillon, which, you know, you can make your own or you can, you know, use better than bouillon or something like that. Anyway, uh, but, but the recipes are very nicely laid out, uh, easy to read. 
and very cute little drawings on the bottom. There is also little hints along the way, um, recipe ideas like quick fix salads and different tips like this one. Did you know to prevent fruits like apple or pear slices from turning brown, coat them in lemon juice mixed with an equal amount of water. I think we all know that, but they're kind of fun. If, uh, you know, just to along the way see that. They also start out in the introduction with shopping strategies of, uh, you know, what to keep in mind when you're trying to make quick meals. I thought that was a very interesting section. Uh, the book is divided into appetizers and then soups and sandwiches, and then it goes into separating the meats and poultry, from poultry and fish recipes. Uh, it also has some really uh, quick and easy desserts that are pretty simple to make. Uh, very, it was very appealing to me. Uh, I, there was even a few in here that I thought I wouldn't mind, you know, trying it out. They even have a vegetarian section. Uh, they have a, like a meatless chili recipe right here. They have vegetables and side dishes, crock pot meals, and like I said, lots of cute little drawings on each of the pages. So it might be a book worth checking out. I'll leave the Amazon link below so that you can just look at it, see the author, that type of stuff. It was published in 2001. I am pretty certain that most libraries would have this book so that you could just look at it from the library and before you make a choice of whether you would want one. Also, like I've always said, check thrift books um, for these types of older books. That's a great resource for inexpensive books. And as well as Amazon oftentimes has um, the um, used books if you can't find something new you can find a used book at a decent price so anyway those are all options if it's a book that interests you and that you would like to check out okay ladies i think that wraps up today's video and i really appreciate you being here as always and please don't forget to let me know in the comments uh, what you're having for dinner what kind of good things you have going on in your kitchen uh, any comments uh, on what i've talked about today are also appreciated uh, if you like this video, please do give me a thumbs up. That really helps my little channel. It is growing, and I am loving that fact. In fact, welcome to all the new members. It seems like, um, you know, every time I put out a video, I get quite a few new people, and I, I really am enjoying uh, getting to know so many new people. Uh, as you leave comments and introducing yourself to me, I, I really appreciate that a lot. Okay, ladies, I need to go and uh, get some stuff done on my, in my day today, and I hope that you all have an awesome and blessed day and weekend ahead, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye-bye.